Chapter 15 The Fairy's Farewell No one slept. Mr. Wong stayed by Lee's, out Lee's side. Lily, May, and Ranger went back to the canvas tent and huddled with Mrs. Wong in the flickering shadows. The fires burned all night but never reached the park. In the morning, the girls found Mr. Wong slumped against Lee's cot, asleep. Lee was awake and looking better. The medicine, the hot broth, and a good night's sleep had given him strength. Mr. Wong left and returned an hour later with an impatient cart driver and a sturdy-looking brown horse. The horse pawed the dirt, and the man tapped his foot as Red Cross workers loaded Lee into the cart. Mrs. Wong climbed in, too. They loaded bundles of clothes and bedding, the packet of papers May had saved, the tiny gold canary in its cage, a suitcase full of things Mr. Wong had brought from the store, and a satchel of coins he carried through the burning streets. Then they set off for the ferry dock. The cart was full, so Lily, May, and Ranger walked along behind it with Mr. Wong. The wheels stirred up clouds of dust and ash, but L Lily barely noticed. She was used to the heavy gray air. Traveling through the city was like walking through a nightmare. The earthquake and fires had transformed familiar landscapes into twisted versions of home. The cart lurched so violently over the cracks in the street that Lily feared it might be shaken to pieces. Finally, they rattled and bounced their way to the foot of the market streets. Crowds waited to board the morning ferries. Lily held tight to May's hand as they inched their way toward the boat. Come now, it's time to board, Mr. Wong said. He lifted Lee from the cart and into a smaller wagon someone had found to get him to the boat. He helped Mrs. Wong down from the cart and held her arm as they shuffled down the dock. Lily climbed up into the cart to get her bundle and the canary. The little bird fluttered over to her side of the cage. Hello, little one, Lily whispered, and pushed her finger through the bamboo bars. The canary poked gently with its beak. A tiny peck of a kiss. Then it fluttered away to another perch, and it sang, Cheer he, cheer he, swee, swee, cheer. May, do you hear? Lily couldn't take her eyes off the little bird. It was the most hopeful thing she'd ever heard. Warchee, warchee, cherry-coo, cherry-coo, woo. It's lovely, May said, but father's waiting. Lily picked up the cage, hopped down from the cart, and hurried off after the Wong family. Passengers only, a crew member shouted as they neared the gate. There's no space for trunks or bags. Mr. Wong left his suitcase in a heap of abandoned belongings. He tucked his sack of coins and the family's papers into his coat. May dropped her bundle of clothes, and Lily did the same. She set down the canary's cage, unlatched the door, and slowly put her hand inside. A few of the bird's delicate golden feathers whispered around the bottom of the cage. Lily picked one up and tucked it into her pocket. Then she held her finger at the edge of the cage. Come on now. Come with me, the little bird sang one last time, cherry re sweet, and hopped onto its new perch. Lily cupped her hand around him to protect him from the bumping crowd. Then she turned to Ranger. Ready for a boat ride, dog? Mr. Wong took out coins to pay, but the ferry was free today. The officer waved them through. Lily was last in line. When she started forward, the officer held up his hands. Passengers only! He barked and pointed down at Ranger. But, Lily stopped, I can't leave him behind. Then you'll have to stay. There's no room for dogs. The officer pushed her aside so other passengers could keep boarding. Lily dropped to her knees beside Ranger, still cupping the tiny bird in her hand and holding him close to her chest. What was she supposed to do? I won't leave you, Lily whispered, burying her face in Ranger's neck. I won't. Ranger felt Lily shaking with sobs. He felt the little bird twitching between them. He listened to the buzz of the people and the blast of the fairy horn. Then he heard May's voice. Lily, hurry! She was waving from the boat, but Lily didn't look up. 
Ranger shook her gently away from him. Then he licked her hand and looked up at the boat. Lily looked up, too. She saw Mate waving and motioning. L Ranger nudged Lily toward the boat. You're telling me to go on, aren't you? She whispered. You've helped us so much. Of course you'll be all right taking care of yourself, too. Lily barked and leaned his body against her. Lily needed to go now. Lily uncupped her hands. The, dirt, the bird swayed perched on her finger and wrapped an arm around the shaggy dog's neck. Be safe, dog, and thank you. She stood, then hesitated, and reached into her pocket. In China, we have an old proverb that says, to walk a thousand li and present a swan feather. The gift is light, but the friendship is solid. She tucked the tiny yellow canary feather under Ranger's collar. I don't have a swan feather for you, so this will have to do for now, my old friend. Perhaps you'll find us again one day. Lily, May called again from the boat. Lily curled her hand around the bird, tucked it under her shirt, and walked through the gate. Ranger watched her board. He listened as the great ship blasted its horn and pulled away from the dock. The crowd was still buzzing. The soldiers were still shouting, but there was another sound, too. A quiet hum. Ranger found the bundle Lily had left behind and nuzzled it open. There, with her clothes and a thin wool blanket, was his first aid kit. The humming was getting louder and louder. Ranger nuzzled the strap over his neck, and the humming buzzed louder again. The old metal box grew warm as Ranger's neck and light spilled from the cracks. He looked up at the ferry again. It was getting smaller already taking Lily and May across the big bay to the city that wasn't on fire. They were safe now. It was time for Ranger to go home. The humming grew louder, and the light from the box got brighter and brighter. So bright, Ranger had to close his eyes. When he opened them, Luke was standing in the mudroom with a bundle of old clothes.